Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Back on the Corn School today with Aaron Stefanis from Pride Seeds. Hey, sir, uh, welcome and thanks for stopping by. Hey, my pleasure. Always love being on the Corn School. Awesome. Hey, you and I uh, hooked up this summer at your research plot, um, your Precision Ag Research location here in Elmira, Ontario. And we talked about the difference between fixed and flexed hybrids and yep. the role they play in multi-hybrid and variable rate planning. Now you've got some results. I want to talk about those in a minute. But hey, let's take a step back for a second and talk about why growers should consider multi-hybrid variable rate. That's a great question. Because really, there's all this technology out there. What's going to give you payback and where? So biggest thing, uh, I live in you know that Elmira, Bloomingdale area, highly variable soil types. We can go from sand to high productive loam in a matter of 100 feet. So in an area like that where you have major field variability, this is where your multi-hybrid variable rate is going to pay off. If you don't have that, you know, you have more down pressure issues or issues with the planter than something like, you know, hydraulic down pressure is, is more of an investment. But so we're specifically looking at variable soil types here. Right. Now, how do you do it well? How do you get the best return for your investment? Great question. So I have a, a three pillar system that I look at. So really, it's a systemic approach. All these pillars work together but you have to have these three as your base. And so that's data, data, good data, good base data, good practical knowledge, and good analytics. So if we're looking at the base data, <clears throat> you need good information to make your scripts off of. So that could be digital soil maps, you know, someone coming out with, uh, you know, Trimble's SIS or, uh, or soil optics or something like that to, to get digital uh, soil maps. Costs a little bit of money, but, you know, then you have your soil types. You could use your yield maps. Um, the biggest thing with that is that good base data, you have to ha it has to be representative to what you know. Mm -hmm. So is this what you know as your soil type change? So if is it a red, is it red because it it's, uh, was a drought year, 2012, 2016, and the crop was not doing well because of sand, or was it because it was a, an emergence issue in clay? So you could have a red area because it's a high clay, you didn't get a good emergence. We know how emergence is important. Mm -hmm. um, you could be lacking yield there. So making sure you identify what it is in the field. That's where the practical knowledge yeah, comes in. Exactly. <clears throat> so ground truthing is exactly what I said, checking to make sure that those areas are right because your you can get a lot of information. I mean, we're in the technology era. Information is at our fingertips instantly. You got to ground truth it. You got to make sure that it's right. And that's, you know, that's a major building block on that. Um, and then finally moving into analytics. Um, you need to analyze your data properly. And I'd say on the front end and the back end. <clears throat> so on the back end, we're looking at, I would really recommend a third party person, especially if you're writing scripts, even if you're writing your own scripts, to have someone third party like Veritas, they're who we work with, they run our scripts and do our data anal and analytics. Um, they tell us, okay, that script you made, this was the right population in this management zone. You made money here. You did not make money here. So then you're not only looking at where you made money in the past, being planting that planning year, but you can now adjust to how maybe you can make more money in the future. So it's more looking at it from that business standpoint as well, not just agronomics, on how I can push revenue and yield through good practical agronomics and script writing. Now let's talk revenue and yield yep. about, and look at your results. What did you find when you go back and look at you know, the data that you accumulated from your research site this year? Yep. So one site, one location, one replication, we got 5.5 .5 bushels, um, which I think for this is a pretty good win because this, you know, this field is chosen specifically for variability. The sands can yield under 100 bushels on, on a dry year. Um, we didn't get a dry year. This is a perfect year for it. I mean, the field yielded 190 bushels, which is a record for that field. Um, <clears throat> but we still got a gain, which to me is, is still a win. Yeah. Now, you also did some math. And what's yep. going to cost a grower to get into multi-hybrid variable rate? Let's, talk, let's take a look at some of your scenarios. So before we get into the payback in a year-by-year -year basis and how many rows, I want to go through some, some quick numbers just uh, on where I get my basis from. So we're looking at $1,500 a row. So that, that is just the meter. Um, it could be plus or minus. It depends if you have a 2020 monitor or not. Um, that's just a rough cost that meter going on your existing corn planter. I added $4 for script writing because like I said earlier, I really think it's important to get your script right or you could be missing an opportunity. So I put that in there as well. Um, on the uh, increased revenue side, so I'm assuming so soil variability, like I said earlier, that's your payback. 
that type of field. Uh, 5.5 bushels times $4 a bushel, we got $22 an acre revenue. So doing a quick ROI calculation, you take your $1,500 per row, you uh, take your $22 of revenue minus the $4 of script writing, and divide those, which makes for 83.33 uh, acres per row. So we went through that. Now we're going to quickly run through a scenario of a 12-row planner with a one-year payback. So we have the $1,500 per row of cost, $32.70 added on for interest for that one year. And the same math on the bottom gives us 85, just over 85 acres per row. Uh, so you do that 85 acres times 12 uh, rows. That means you're just over 1,000 acres uh, to pay this off in one year, which for some people that, that's feasible. For others, it may not be. And finally, for so if you don't, maybe this is something you want to look at because you have variable soils, you think you got a payback, let's look at a three-year payback. So same numbers as before, just three years, same interest rate. Um, so now with that, that uh, we're taking that 1500 and making it 500 because it's over three years, adding the interest, doing the math, same math on the, uh, on the uh, payback and script writing, and now we're looking at 29 and a half acres per row. So do that by 12. Now we're looking at 354 acres per row. That's a lot easier payback, um, for, say for someone that's uh, 500 acres of corn or even just over 300, 300 400 acres of, row of corn, that, that's an easy payback. So after one year or three years, I can pay this off and I'm making money. Yep, that's exactly right. And really, you know, there's a lot of concepts talked at uh, farm conferences. So we got both at FarmSmart and at uh, Southwest Ag, we had people talking about this 5% rule. So being 5% better in three categories in your business and your competitor. So, okay, let's say you paid off in one year, even better. That's one year down and then the rest is just you being potentially 5% better than your competitor. I did the numbers on this, it's just two and a half, but still that's two and a half percent on yield being better than your, uh, your competitors. So that, that's money in the pocket for you and driving your business forward. And it's the same for the smaller guy as well. Awesome. Hey, some great insights, some great math. Uh, hey, thanks for taking the time. No problem. My pleasure.